yeah, the run cam still has some bugs, but you can blow them away. Hello and welcome, RC Shim on the Eichberg. Today you will see the Runcam Sump Pro. But first, let's start with its predecessor, the Sump, the Just Sump from Runcam. I got it, but back then it was so crappy I refused to re even review it because it's an insult to your eyeballs. <laughs> now, it's maybe okay for 50 bucks, but yeah. Here you see the Sump Pro on my Chimera 7, and you need a U back. The one thing though, you. I have a lot of jello or vibrations on my 7 inch drone here, and usually only the GoPro with its jello hiding technique works. So don't judge the footage too much here. Later on, you will see the 3.5 inch drone copes way better with the Sump Pro. Long range flying here and flying around the scenery. Here with the three and a half inch drone, I firstly fly with the thumb again, without ND filter here. Stabilization test uh, looks crappy because gyro data sucks on the thumb, on the normal thumb. And in the dark area, yeah, it works here. Overall the image looks quite washed out. The second flight here with ND filter now, a bit better, still not looking too good. And once again, stabilization doesn't do anything for us here. Now let's move over to the Thumb Pro without ND filter here. And in a 4K 30 mode, quite stuttery, but also my mount wasn't optimal with the dual lock tape. But colors are more saturated. I do no color correction here. Only in the stabilized version I have a bit of lens correction, but not too much. I Stabilize with gyro flow, but not with perfect settings probably. This is now with ND filter. It's a bit better, but still you see the micro shakes, but they are from my mount. Now it's stabilized and you notice that stabilization works way better here on the Thumb Pro than on the normal Thumb. That's the big takeaway. They improved their, their gyro data quality. It's not as good as the competition, but it's way better than the normal sump. Speaking of the competition, this is the peanut. And you see side by side ND filter and no ND filter. And both versions are stabilized. The colors look way more saturated. And it's just extremely smooth to my eyes, very smooth, but it's only 2.7 or 2.6k. In reality it's 2.8k in square and you can pick or use the stabilization. This is in full screen without ND filter. You see that there was jello and with ND filter there is less amount of jello. So yeah, my mount at my copter isn't the best, but yeah, that are that are situations that you have to expect on quads. But overall, this looks pretty decent. This is once again an example of the Sump Pro in 4K 30 mode, which is very prone to vibrations. And you see, if you concentrate in the center here on the little roof, there are a lot of micro vibrations due to my dual lock Velcro kind of mount, which is a bad idea. So don't do this and don't misjudge the camera for shitty quality if it's really your mount. I'm talking to myself, by the way. <laughs> so, up to this point, I thought, yeah, quality looks shit, and I thought that 4K30 is yeah, not really usable. But next you will see that it was just a mount. Okay, the next day, a zip tie and a very firm mount to my 3.5 inch drone, and it looks way better. So, most of the micro jitters are gone away and even the 4k 30 looks halfway decent without any stabilization here so don't see a lot of need for stabilization on these kinds of acro flights yeah but you still have some some judges and 
one of the main problems I see is the the fof is not wide angle enough. It's too much zoomed in for me. And this especially will be a problem if you want to use stabilization. Now switch over to the 2.7K60, which for my eyes looks way smoother. Not so much dropped frames, I suppose. There is a new firmware with lesser chance of dropping frames. This is now stabilized, this little dove here. I could come quite close to it. But you see, yeah, you see some artifacts on the stabilization runs that I had. And this is because I didn't do enough zoom in, because there is not so much wide angle to zoom into. Well, that's the main problem if you try to flow this footage. You either are very much zoomed in or you have this kind of artifacts on the margin, on the border. And it was hot this day, yeah. And ND filter and 60 frames is not good for low light, as you see in this example. But other than this, 2.7K 60 is the way to go for me, for such little acro flights with the Sun Pro. And with these final images, now we can compare prices. The not recommended former thumb is around 60 euros or dollars. In my opinion, it's not worth it. The Sump Pro 4K is halfway decent. You can get it around 100, 110 dollar mark. It's okay for what it delivers. It's actually, yeah, it's quite good for what it can do for you. And I was lucky to get the Cadix Peanut for around 211 euros back then, but it was on sale. Now it's a bit harder to find and more on the $300 mark, which is way too expensive. In that case, you could also consider the DJI Action 2. I've seen it for as low as 250 and you get way more camera from the DJI Action 2, but also more weight. With that all being said, thanks a lot for watching, see you next time, bye for now.